One of the truly beneficial features of digital protective relays is the ability to record event histories and what happened just before and after a trip event. And so I'm going to demonstrate this using the Schweitzer SEL 501 overcurrent protection relay that we have in our relay demonstration system. So what we have here is a uh, shop vacuum cleaner, a small shop vac, connected to our relay system as a load. I'm going to turn it on and we're going to see how the relay responds to it. Now right now the relay is set uh, for conditions which should not trip when I turn on the vacuum cleaner. So let's see what happens. And indeed, the vacuum cleaner did not trip. If we come over here, though, on the relay display, we see something that says New Event Fault X. It doesn't give us any more information than that on the front display, just looking at it. We can see there's no targets actually set here. No trip took place. So it's kind of curious then what happened. If we come over to our serial terminal screen, I can type in the word event and digitally communicate with the relay. When I do that, it gives me a report of the event, what it detected that would be considered and noteworthy or worthy of being called an event. If I scroll up and examine what happened, we see first, I said it picked up a fault on relay X right there, and let's see, for duration, nine and a half cycles. And we come down here and we take a look at this uh, display. We see relay X, relay Y. We see the various uh, currents for A, B, and C phase for X, A, B, and C phase for Y. And we're not using relay Y, we're only using relay X right now. And in particular, we're only using phase B of relay X. So if you look at the column for IBX, that is the only column for which we see any uh, numbers of the three different phases. So we're using it essentially as a single phase relay. And what you see here are quarter cycle samples. So these four rows right here are one cycle of the AC wave. These four rows are another cycle of the AC wave. These four rows are a third cycle, etc. And these are instantaneous current values. So at this moment in time, minus 4 amps. This moment in time, plus 5 amps. This moment in time, plus 9 amps. This moment in time, negative 14, and so on. Now over here on the right-hand side of the display, what we see are indications of the elements inside the relay, whether or not they will actually uh, pick up or initiate a trip. Now we have 51P, which is the phase time overcurrent, 51Q, which is the negative sequence time overcurrent, 51N, which is the neutral time overcurrent, or the uh, zero sequence neutral overcurrent, then we have 50P, that's the instantaneous phase overcurrent, 50Q, instantaneous uh, negative sequence, and 50N, the instantaneous neutral or instantaneous zero sequence. Now these dots here mean that really nothing's going on. Nothing's picked up, nothing's tripped. Right here you see a uh, greater than symbol, and then you see it followed by the letter P. That is indicating that the phase element, 51P, the time overcurrent phase element has begun to pick up. So in that moment in time we've exceeded the pickup value for that relay element. And you notice in this first cycle, no current is flowing. Second cycle, we do have current. So that is when the uh, vacuum cleaner is first turned on. Now moving down, we see the letter P persisting for a few more cycles. Down, 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 down. Then finally it goes away. And you can see why. If you trace these values over here in the current column, you see uh, basically hitting a peak of about 12 amps here, a uh, peak of 11 amps a peak of 10 amps. As we fall off, as the motor's inrush current falls off, eventually we fall below the pickup value for the time over current element, and that's when the letter P disappears. So the event that we saw reported by the relay was not a trip event, but it did pick up on the 51P time over current element. So let's see what happens if we actually do have a trip event. I'm going to go over here to our relay and make a settings change. I'm going to go here, set relay X, and enter my passcode, 501 by default, model number of the relay. And here it's over current relay B. What I'd like to do at this point is set this for an instantaneous overcurrent to be the fast trip. Uh, I want to set it for a value that the shop vac will actually trip. Now the shop vac pulls an inrush current of about 18 amps when it starts. 
we have a CT ratio of 20 to 5 or 4 to 1. So if I put a secondary instantaneous uh, pickup value of 4 amps, that would translate to a primary vacuum cleaner current value of 16 amps, which should be low enough for this thing to trip. So I'm going to do that right here. I'm going to set that from 8 amps to 4. And then I'm going to go down to the end of my menu here and save the changes. So at this point, this should be sensitive enough on the instantaneous overcurrent element to trip on phase B if I turn on the vacuum cleaner. So let's see what happens. Sure enough, I turn it on. You could hear the thunk of the circuit breakers uh, opening, tripping. And if I look at the front panel of the relay, I see I've got targets here that are indicating a trip on the X relay, instantaneous phase B. Remember, we're only using phase B on this three-phase relay, which is why we only see a trip there. So coming over to our display, it did report a fault uh, on overcurrent relay B, uh, duration 2.75 cycles. So if I want more event history on this, I can type in the word event, and what it's going to give me is once again a report of what happened. And we'll scroll back up to the beginning of this report, analyze it again, and we'll see how it differs from the last one. So scrolling up, we see once again Relay X, uh, primary amps. The first cycle here is when nothing happened. The second cycle is when the vacuum cleaner was turned on and we begin to see current being pulled through B phase. Now over here, we see that we have hit the 51P, that's the time over current element. It begins to pick up right here. That happens to be set for a pickup value of 3 amps secondary or 12 amps primary. So it's actually the first one to pick up. Then over here, that's when our instantaneous, our 50p element, picks up. That's because we set that to a secondary CT value of 4 amps. That's a primary value of 16 amps. So the 51 picked up and then the 50 picked up afterwards. Now because the 50p is an instantaneous, what that means is that as soon as it picks up, it trips the breaker. And so immediately we see a number 1 appear under the output column. So that's telling us that output contact number 1 has been asserted. We have uh, initiated a trip command to the breaker. Now this gets really interesting here. <clears throat> Notice how we have a, an output here of 1, an output of 1, all the way down. Notice what happens to our actual current values. We still have, looks like a full cycle of AC current peaking at about 17 amps. Then here we have a full cycle of AC current peaking at 16 amps. And then right here, halfway through this cycle, that is when the current seems to fall off dramatically. And by this cycle right here, we have no more current anymore. In other words, what has happened is the circuit breaker has opened. So we have uh, initiated a trip event right here. The relay has asserted its output contact. But it's taken this long for the circuit breaker to actually open. So we're looking at a delay in the circuit breaker of about two and a half cycles worth of time. And notice here uh, the uh, 50 P element is no longer showing an H, it's no longer showing an instantaneous because when the circuit breaker tripped, the current has fallen below the pickup value, of course, and it no longer is picking up that element. This is very important diagnostic information. It tells us what element of the relay picked up, which is important when you have multiple elements at work. It also tells us when it asserts the output contact to trip the breaker, and diagnostically, we can tell from the data how long it took the circuit breaker to trip. In this case, a little over two cycles worth of time. Very valuable information. And then here, if you see, we're scrolling further down. Uh, at this point, it stops asserting the uh, contact out to the circuit breaker. It says, OK, it's realized it's already tripped. There's no point in trying to trip it anymore. And so that bit goes to a zero state again. So that is our report summary. Another in interesting thing to bring up here is that this particular relay keeps a record of a number of events, not just the latest one. So if I wanted to recall the event that happened before this, which was the event where it actually picked up the time over current element, but it didn't trip, I can go event 2. And what that does is that looks back in history at the previous event. If I typed in event 3, that would look at the uh, event uh, three times back, or event 4, the fourth event back in time. So this relay actually holds a number of event histories, which you can review using the serial uh, connection, in this case using hyperterminal to talk to the relay, 
or if you want to use one of SEL's software products like Accelerator, you can do that as well and review the events. You can even store the events using that software, uh, store it to your PC for further analysis. Very, very useful um, abilities here, capabilities here with digital relays. Stuff like this we just did not have with the old electromechanical uh, protective relay systems.